So I have a number of things to say about a little more about the Mandela thing. Um, honestly, I really wish that I had not brought it up, <laughs> but I didn't bring it up. I wish I hadn't responded. I can't take videos down. Once I post a video and it gets a bunch of engagement, if you delete it, that could be really bad for uh, it. It creates confusion. Number one, it also has bad effects as far as the reach of your channel. Not that I'm really trying to get my channel to have reach, but my reach is pretty small. So, you know, I might as well not hurt it. But what I don't want is that to be what people stumble across when they hit my channel and find themselves in the debate. Hold on, just... So anyway, I got interrupted by a five-year-old who wants me to play Crash Bandicoot. That is very important, so I'm going to have to join him soon here. But anyway... Okay, so I don't want people to hit this channel and find themselves in the middle of this debate. Um, it is clearly a divisive issue. It's one of the most divisive ones I've seen because you force people into a position where they have to defend the word of God or defend their experience over the word of God. Now, here's the problem. If you defend the word of God, you have to be very careful because there are things that we remember a certain way and you're dealing with people's memories, which that's very personal. And I'm learning as I go that this has to be treated really sensitively. This is one of the most personal kind of attacks I've seen. Now the people on both sides agree that it's demonic. <laughs> and evil so my contention is it shouldn't be touched um there's nothing profitable it is a divisive issue that if you entangle yourself with it you will be damaged that's my sense of it from the very beginning is that you can't even pursue the matter without destabilizing yourself so my defense mechanism from the beginning with this one has been don't touch it okay now also uh i do want to clarify though what the theory is really saying it's not that things are just changing in this universe with the mandela effect like it's making random changes no the idea is that there are millions or billions of parallel universes where we exist. Multiple copies of our exist, selves exist. And it's based on decision trees. So that, let's say this morning I have hazelnut in my coffee instead of having black coffee. Well, at that decision point, there are two possible, two universes that break off from each other. One in which I did have the hazelnut in my coffee and one in which I did not. And now those two universes are existing in parallel, okay? So every single one of these Mandela changes where you have a memory of something that happened that is not consistent with the reality you're presently in, the implication is that you are no longer the person that you were in the universe where the your memory was in harmony with reality a decision tree of some kind has broken off and now you or a, a copy of you you are a copy of you existing in this other universe that's really what it is you're now on an alternate parallel line so the that has implications for redemption that's why i said it has theological implications because what that is is then which universe did jesus die for all of them just the original if you're just a copy then does the blood avail for you right that it's literally that's the that is what is at stake. That's why this is such a personal attack. It's not just nullifying little things in the universe and an attack on the word. 
It's an attack on you. It's on the attack of the. It's an attack on the validity of you as an entity that exists, or has a right to exist. And this is where it's compatible with Gnosticism, and the Babylonian spirituality and pantheism and this universe that's continually recreating itself and it's consistent it's just a technologic it's techno babylon it's a technological way to bring us into the spiritual concepts that the enemy has been trying to foist on us since the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that all is god the universe is creating itself you are a piece of god you know, all this thing fits into that and that the uh, the reality you live in is a persistent illusion that needs to be dissolved so that God can be regathered back into himself and all can be one. And the only sin is the knowledge or the, the idea that you are separate and divided and into and, and so we need to we need to seek the path of escape from this persistent illusion that's where all that goes okay now christians don't know that that's where that goes they just think oh the bible's been changed but there's a more fundamental thing being addressed now i get offered something to debunk the ed mcmahon clearinghouse thing whether or not i was right in in the debunking of that particular one um is not really the issue because the the answer then is well the beast system has is trying to modify your memory of the thing and debunk itself like debunk your it, this is what the system does is that then a news article will appear to uh explain away the phenomenon well that could be true but if they're able to manipulate on that level my contention is that they can manipulate from the beginning i mean what i said about the matthew thing and luke you know we've been singing i i believe that most of the movies all the christian movies the robe all those movies in the 50s the bible movies were based from catholic tradition I know that for a fact. And though in popular culture, what we hear is repeated again and again and again is the Catholic version of many of these scriptures. Well, somebody will say, you know, Nancy said, no, I remember. And she has a sharp memory. She's able to summarize things I say excellently. And she insists that she remembers it a certain way from the King James and that that is not that it no longer says the way she remembers it now what am i going to do because this is her personal memory i can't argue against that without alienating so that's where it's just so divisive that just trying to handle it gets you in trouble you know if i just blanket say it's a deception don't touch it that can be a dogmatic sort of ignorance that alienates people but i can't say from my experience that it's true that's the other thing is okay let's say the scripture has changed you remember it one way but now all the bibles have been edited so that it now says something else well now you have nothing objective to prove to me that that's the case you only have your memory I don't, you don't have anything that I can look to to say, oh yeah, that's what it actually used to say, but now it says this. How do I know that the music that Nancy referred to is quoting from the King, old King James version before the edit? You know, so that's where it's so subjective at that point that now you just, let's say you are walking around and you've got all these anomalies that you've seen and witnessed. Are you willing to contend for your version of the reality to the point where you put people in a position that they have to either argue to defend the word or believe you and undermine their faith in the word? 
None of us want to do that. I don't think anybody who brought this up here is trying to be divisive like that. And, no, and that's why we all recognize this is satanic and demonic. You can't touch it. So on the one hand, I do wish I did not bring up those videos that because now I'm just perpetuating it. But one last thing I want to say is that I remember uh, Chuck Missler, you know, as far as trusting the word, Chuck Missler was a great teacher. I'm sure many of you have heard of him. And he always, uh, one thing he did really well was defend the word, the integrity of the message system. And he liked to say it's holographic in its design. And it's designed in such a way as to anticipate hostile jamming, like a cryptographer would do. Or crypt, uh, so the way that you do that is you distribute the message system across the available bandwidth. That's how he said it. And what that means is there's no passage, for example, on baptism. There's no passage on the Trinity. There's no single passage we go to to develop our doctrines. They're distributed across the whole surface of the message system so that to get baptism, you study Noah's flood and you study Joshua and uh, Caleb leading the people across the Jordan and you study John the Baptist and you study what Jesus said and you take uh, Peter and you take Romans 6 see it's scattered throughout the whole and it's by assembling at the whole that you get clarity on the doctrine right well the good news about that is that if you attack certain verses and passages you don't end up doing damage to the whole because the message is distributed across the whole and contained in the whole it's holographic you lose a little resolution you lose a little uh, preciousness of the detail if you rip out a few pages. But you can't really undermine the whole because the deeper we look at the thing, we see that literally every letter, every word, every place name, every noun, every adjective, every, everything is there by a supernatural design and is preserved intact in that sense. So... This is how I used to counter, you know, people would say, well, there's inaccuracies in the different translations. It's like, yeah, but the gospel is there from Genesis to Revelation. And the only thing I'm required to believe is that Jesus is the Son of God, died for my sins, and was raised from the dead for my justification. And now I'm sealed, by, and he's coming again. And that's through the whole scriptures. You can't, you would have to alter the whole Bible or throw the whole thing out to get rid of that message. It's literally on every page. So that is a word of comfort to those who are struggling with these anomalies. Whether they're real or if you're being manipulated, you're going to find arguments for both cases. I'm saying don't touch the whole thing. And I think like the people here are wise. Even the ones who believe in it have, have said, okay, I got to let that go. They're not living in it, hopefully. If it's undermining your trust in the Bible, the Bible can withstand the attacks. It is is designed in a way to prevent hostile jamming. I love that. And uh, so take comfort that God knows how to preserve you and the word. Even if you've come to believe these things, it's like, well, what's the way out? And it's scary to me that, that you could believe this and your whole faith in the word could be undermined. You have to just ground yourself in, okay, what is the simple thing that I believe to be saved and am I saved? Yes, I am. You know, the Lord is able to preserve me. And I think, like Nancy, that's the conclusion she's reached. She's smart. Um, so I did not mean to bring this up to start a war or, and I, please be kind to each other. When you're, I learned, when you're talking about this, you're dealing with people's personal memories. That's why it's a personal attack. And also understand that if you're holding this view, you have to realize that the real view is not just that the Bible changed. It's that the universe is branched off and you are a copy, a simulation of the real you. The real you went off into that other uh, decision tree or whatever. I'm sorry. It's really hard for me to talk. My five-year-old is being a complete brat right now. Uh, if he doesn't get attention, he just starts acting up and making all kinds of noise and screaming and pounding away. So I'm going to have to go deal with him. And this video is not satisfying to me at all. I'm kind of irritated. <laughs> All right, I love you all. Please be at peace with each other. Don't push this matter to a point where you're willing to be divisive about it and break fellowship over it. It's too, it's not worth it. Our unity is Jesus Christ and we have to focus on him.